Again, we'll demonstrate uh, artwork that we made in Illustrator and animating it in Adobe Animate. So, uh, again, Animate used to be called Flash. And so this is the Animate program. I'm going to start with a new file like we usually do. Again, the default size is 550 pixels by 400 pixels at 24 frames a second because that's sort of what the frame rate of, of animation is or movies are. Um, so that's where they get the, at least this part. Um, again, if it was high definition, it would be 1920 by 1080. Okay, So I'm going to leave the default and then leave everything else the same over here. Um, this is programming action script and all that stuff. I'm just going to leave that the same. So here's, um, again, here's the window. So there's, here's some co concepts that we need to understand first. Again, we have a bird that's in three different positions. What we're going to do is we're going to import that as something called a movie clip. And a movie clip is like a self-contained graphic that can cycle through the artwork. So before I import the bird, <coughs> I make something called a movie clip. By making a movie clip first, I then import the bird into the movie clip, then take the movie clip, then all, all different positions will be in the timeline, and so there'll be three of them, three different positions of the bird. And then, since it's a movie clip, it'll, I can then designate, designate it as one file that I can animate. Okay, so. The advantage and what, what, what the whole purpose of what I'm trying to say is I want to make one file that cycles through the three flapping options. And to do that, it's called a movie clip. So the first thing I'm going to do is make what's called a, a movie clip. To make a movie clip is what's called a symbol. To do a symbol, you go underneath insert new symbol right here. And again, it's called a movie clip right here. And this is going to be my bird. Bird. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to import the bird. And if you look, you'll notice there's something called a timeline down here towards the bottom. And so what I want to do is I'm going to take one bird position, put it in one. Take second bird position, put it in two. Take the third bird position, put it in three. OK? And then what it's going to do is it's going to cycle this program. It's just going to keep looping between 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, to get the simulation of the flapping. OK, so how I import the bird, again, it's an Illustrator file. I go under File, Import, to Stage. Stage means let's put it onto the artwork. There is a library you kind of store stuff, but I'm going to put it onto the artwork. Then I'm going to choose my Illustrator file. If I can find it, it's on the desktop. Oh, here it is, bird with wing. And then as a, it's bringing it in, it's going to ask you a bunch of questions. Um, I don't want all these individual pieces. I don't want to select all layers. Oh, I do want all layers, but I don't need it to be quite. No, for some reason, it thinks it wants them all. What I want to do is I want to do what's called convert layers to keyframes. There's an option right here that says convert layers to keyframes. Because by default, it thinks you want to bring it in stacked up like this, right? It, wants, it thinks you want to bring it in like you made it inside of Illustrator, where each layer is on top of each other like that. We don't want that. What we want to do is we want to take each layer and put it down the timeline like that. And to do that, we, we change this option to keyframes. What that does is takes each layer and put it down the timeline like that, so it will keep cycling through there. So that's a little that's the option that I need to change there. And so when I'm done I say import and there's my bird and you can see it'll go boom 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 boom. There you see it flapping. There. And I know it's an ugly bird. I know I did it real quick. Okay, so what it's gonna do is it's just gonna keep going like this. Okay, it's going to keep doing that. Okay, let's go back to the main scene. So this was something called a movie clip. It's where I imported the artwork into a self-contained kind of piece of object. It takes it, all the bird pieces and puts it in one object called a movie clip, and I called it bird. 
Okay, I'm going to go back to the scene, which is the main window here. Next, I want to import the I want to import the landscape, right? And to import the landscape, I'm going to put it directly right here onto the stage here. So I'm going to go under File, Import, Import to Stage, and I'm going to bring my background in, right in there, right in there, Jeff's landscape. Hit open, and this time um, I'm going to not say keyframes. I'm going to say single animated layer because I want it to squish all that, all these pieces down into one layer, and so I can move it as one piece. And place object at original position. Set stage size and no, no, no. So I'm just going to say import, and there's my landscape. Okay, again, you can see the window. It's this kind of square area right here. Notice how it kind of starts on the left side. And so let's animate the background. Um, well, actually, let's let's bring the bird in. We'll animate the bird first, then we'll animate the background. Okay, so right now we have one layer. It's called landscape. It's right here. It's ready to animate. It really is. We need to make one more layer to put the bird on top. So there's a layer right here where there's like a little new layer right here. Boom. Make a new layer. This is going to be my bird. And my bird is already stored in here. It's stored in something called the library. It's right here. It's called a bird right there. He's going to be flapping. So I take the bird from the library and I'm going to put him so he's off the stage here. Here he is. I might make him a little smaller. Um, you can scale him down a little bit if you want. He's pretty big. I guess he's okay like that size. I guess we can maybe make him a little smaller. Um, I don't know how to scale him right now. I can't remember. I haven't used this program in, since last year. Uh, let's see. Scale, scale, transform, free transform. And we'll make him just a little smaller. There we go. Okay. So there he is. So here we go. Again, the bird is going to come flying onto the screen as he's flapping, and he's going to stop kind of in the middle, and he's going to keep flapping. When he's done in the middle of the screen, then we're going to take the landscape, and we're going to move that across the screen. So here we go. So again, I'm going to start the bird off the screen. How you animate is down here. I'll bring the timeline up here a little bit so you can see it. How you animate is through this thing called the timeline. Timeline is moments in time, moments in time. So the first one I want to do is I want to take the bird and animate him across for about 30, 30 frames, or maybe let's do 25. Well, we'll do 30 just to make it nice and even. To do that, I need to put a moment in time for the bird to be out in the middle of the screen. We call that a keyframe. So to insert a keyframe here, I right click on it and say insert keyframe. The landscape's gone. You're like, what happened to the landscape? Well, there's no landscape in number 30 because it's only in number one. Don't worry. We'll bring the landscape back. We can go here and make that a keyframe. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to right click on my landscape there and make that a keyframe. Okay, my keyframe. Let's back. Whoosh. Again, I want the bird, though, not to be here at 30. I want it to be out in the middle of the screen right there. So here it is. Of course, in number one, he's all the way over there. Number 30, he's all the way over here. So now we need to tell the computer to calculate the in-between parts. So what are you going to tell the computer is, okay, two needs to be a little bit further, three needs to be a little further. It's going to do the calculation for you on how far the bird is going to go here. To do that, we do something called tweening. Hence the word tweening. It's in between the two keyframes. So to do that, we go underneath, we right-click on the first keyframe right here and say Classic Tween. Classic Tween. Don't use Motion Tween. That, that's a different process. I'm going to use Classic Tween. And what it does now is as I drag, you'll see the bird will move across the screen. Now, he's not flapping yet because we haven't tested it. You only, you only see the flapping when you test it. So right now he's flap, 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 boom, he stops. Now we want to animate the landscape in the background to move across. So we're going to do the same thing. This time we're going to move the bird. We're going to keep the bird the same position. I'm just going to go out to number 60 and put a keyframe there. I'm not going to move him at all. But I'm going to go and put a keyframe at number for the landscape there at 62. Insert keyframe there. Now, of course, the landscape needs to move also. So what we're going to do with the landscape is at number 60, 
I'm going to move the landscape over to this side over here. So again, the landscape is going to move between 30 and 60. So again, I go to number 30 for the landscape where it's it hasn't moved between 1 and 30, the landscape hasn't moved. But between 30 and 60, I want the landscape to move. So I'm going to right click on that and say insert classic oh, tween. No. I can't find the tool. And you'll notice now the landscape moves. And that's how you make an animation. You want to test it? You want to see? Here we go. We can go under control, test movie. We can even test it in the browser. Here we go. Let's test it in the browser. Oh, we don't have flash. Jeez. What, what the tools go? Here we go. There he is. He's flapping. He's flapping. He's flapping. He's flapping. I know it's an ugly bird, but again, these are common animation concepts. Cycling. Cycling, so the bird is cycling through those three different layers that I made in, in Illustrator, right? And then taking the background and moving it. We refer to that as image pan is the term. And it's an old animation. You know, Disney's been using that for years. So who, who uses the background moving like that? Ken Burns. You ever see the Ken Burns uh, uh, of documentaries, right? He would take his old Civil War photos and he would take the camera, like a video camera, and he would zoom in and move it around. Okay, that's how Ken Burns. That's where, you know, if you ever use the old version of iMovie, they, they had the Ken Burns effect. I remember that in the old version of iMovie. So that's the same concept as the background moving. See, we've got something big and it's moving through the window. And then this, of course, is the cycling between. These are very common, simple animation techniques. Now this was done with Adobe Animate. You could have done the same thing with Adobe um, After Effects. If you want to learn more animation, I'll be teaching video class Monday evening um, in this room, spring semester. Digital video, I teach both After Effects as well as Adobe Premiere and um, Photoshop and because we do a lot of animation in Photoshop same concepts so we do things on different layers and then bring them in. The advantage of using, of course, Illustrator, though, is that it uses vectors. So you can scale things really quickly and, and efficiently, very quickly and efficiently. So let me save this, and I'll do a real quick demo, if you want, of uh, After Effects, if you want. You guys want to do, I got, I, I got about, my battery's almost done. I'm at 9%. My computer's going to die soon. You want to see uh, After Effects for a minute? Sure? Okay. Okay, let's do an animation of a logo. So, of course, let's go into our Illustrator. Let's make um, a logo. I don't know what size I want it to be. Uh, whatever, we'll make it this size. Oh, geez, that's not what I wanted. I want. Um, I don't want that. I want this. I want this. I want. Where's the uh, high definition? Do you see a high definition in this window? Oh, here we go. High definition. Why does it have to give me a transparent background? Uh. Okay, here we go. Okay, so let me make a quick logo. Here we go. We'll do a circle, square, triangle logo. Here's a, a square. Let's do a... Oh, really? Let's do a circle. Oh, that's not a circle. What is that? What is that? What did what happened? Oh, not really? So let's do a rectangle. Let's do a circle. And 
And then let's do um, triangle. Okay, and then um, we, we'll do. We can do some text in the program. So here we go. We got a nice, uh, nice logo going here. Whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to save that as Illustrator file. Again, there's a program called. Um, after Effects that you can do animate. Ooh, I got seven, seven percent. Do I have it on here? Oh, here it is. Probably a newer version. Okay, so how this program works is very similar to Photoshop. It's basically Photoshop with um, with layers. Okay, it's Photoshop with layers. With um, Photoshop layers that that you can animate. So. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is start with a new composition, which is basically a window. Remember the window that we had in the other one? Hey, we got to make a window. There's a new window. You want black background or you want white background? We could do white background so we could see things. So I have a window. Uh oh, battery's going to die soon. I don't know if I brought my power pack. Oh, I did. Okay, so I'm going to animate my logo um, and then some text. So I'm going to import my logo. Uh, wherever, what did I call it? Just logo, didn't I? Logo. Where's logo? Logo, here it is. So I have my logo. One of the beauties of this program is it automatically recognizes that it's vector. Okay, so if I drag it onto the screen, onto my, my artboard here, it recognizes it. Okay, so I can scale it really big and scale it really small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this logo and I'm going to make it really, really, really big and transparent and I'm going to have it come flying in. And then I'll put some text on the screen that, that animates onto. But I'll do the animation in the program itself. So I'm going to animate this. How I'm going to animate it is by using keyframes. Just like remember in that last program, each little dot was a, was a moment in time. This has the same concept. Each dot is a moment in time. So in this logo that I made here, I have position, and I can't move this up very high. Let me move it up a little bit. You have, you have anchor point is where you rotate or whatever you want. You got position, you got scale, and you got opacity. And you even got rotate. You want it to spin? You want it to fade, spin, and fly in? Let's do, let's do all of them. How about that? So again, moments in time. I'm going to hit the stopwatch. Boom, that's moment in time. Boom, that's a moment in time. Boom, that's a moment in time. Boom, that's a moment in time. So I'm going to move it a little bit. Uh, this, uh, so we want it to come flying in for about one second. So I'm going to go out to one second here, and I'm going to hit more keyframes. Boom, boom, moment in time, moment in time. So here we go. I'm going to go all the way back to the first moments in time. I'm going to scale it really big. I'm going to rotate it around and, and make it transparent. So as it comes flying in, it's going to be transparent. As it comes in, it goes... To do that, I go back to the beginning. Again, I'm going to scale it really big. There we go. Ooh, it looks blurry and ugly, doesn't it? Ah, Illustrator. You have to do continuous rastering. Oh, no, that's not it. Where's the continuous rastering? Uh, is it this one? No. This one? No. This one? No. 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 Where's the continuous rastering? It's in here. Call. Is it this? I thought it was this one. What is this? Yeah, but that's all pixelated. Oh, I guess because I have. No, but that's not what I want. It should be. What? It, it brought it in as Illustrator. It says Illustrator right there, right? Hold on. I got to figure this out here. Let me pause my movie just for a moment. It was, it was this box right here. A little plus. So now it can seize it as vector. Let's scale, 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 really big. Scale, 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 really big. And then um, 
Let's change the opacity down to zero. Zero. And then um, we will rotate, um, let's say, five times. So it'll come flying in like this. See how it's spinning around and around and around and around and boom, it stops. Shh, like that. Shh. Okay, so we can preview it, see what it looks like. Um, where's my render, preview, render, pre-render? No, I don't want that. <laughs> really? Isn't there um, preview, I guess? Oh, no, I don't want current frame, I want the beginning. Composition, I'm going to preview. I keep changing this on me here. Preview. There we go. Okay, you see it. So you can see this animation, look at how it spins around and around and around. As it's coming in, it's fading in, fading in, fading in, fading in. Okay, kind of cool. Did you see how quick I did that? Just a little some illustrator, slap it in this program, do something like that. Okay, let's, uh, let's put some text on there. We'll make the text animate, so um, we'll make some text. Um, text layer here. And what, what do we want to call this company? Square.com. Square.com. How about that? I guess it's probably taken, but we'll do it anyways. Square.com. And uh, change that color. Square.com. Oh, I got some crazy font going there. It's okay. Square.com. And we don't want it to start uh, the text to come in until after the animation's over, so we'll, we'll push that over. Oh. We'll push that over a little bit here. Okay, and then we want this to animate in. So we can go underneath uh, uh, animate text. Um, no. We want to use um, effects and presets. We want text effects. Okay, so no, not text. This is, what do we want? Effects and presets. We want text effects. Where is the text effects? Text effects. I think there's a text effects pop up window here somewhere. Um, character. What happens to my text effects? Browse presets, apply animation presets. There, te animate text. Why am I? Do I have to select it like this? No, no, no. Okay, just give me a second. I gotta find that. That no, I find it. Okay, so uh, we want the text to do what? We want it to animate in. We want it to fade in, fade up, drop characters, decode. Center, random in, random slow, spin in, spin move. There's a bunch of text animations already there. Um, spin in character. Let's try that. You want to try that? Let's see. Okay, I need to move the, the inter, inter piece off the screen there. Okay, I'm not going to use that one. How about we do a uh, random shuffle? We can drop in character. Center spiral? I don't know, let's try that because the other one was spinning too, right? There we go. Look at that. That'll go well with my other one. There we go. Okay, so here's my final, um, my final animation. Again, this is all done using... Illustrator and After Effects, and um, here we go. That comes flying in, and then my text comes flying on. Logo comes flying in. Logo comes flying in. Let's 
So Illustrator is very useful for all kinds of other aspects other than just making posters. Okay? Okay, I'm going to stop this.